What next? That's what I want to share with you now. What next? With the war in Israel and current implications, what next? And I want to share this with you for a moment. And I think it's very important. I want to go to Matthew chapter 24, a passage we've studied before in Bible study for sure. I don't think I preached from it, but we've studied it through our Bible study. What is called the Olivet Discourse or the Apocalyptic Discourse. The last message from Jesus, one of five discourses, and um, I want to go through this. I want to read. I can't read it all. I'm going to read. I put there verse four, but I want to read from verse three is there. Verse three down to verse eight. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us. What will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, and these are the beginning of sorrows. The word of the Lord is blessed. Uh, just a few days ago, literally a week ago yesterday, I was in South Africa. I was awake when it was happening. I think you might have been asleep. No, it's the other way around. But there was an attack in Israel by Hamas. You might not have known Hamas before last week, but you couldn't have made it through this week without hearing their name many times. There was an attack. And um, many people are asking questions, and I'll talk about that attack and its implications. Obviously, it has implications because our Bible tells us that Jerusalem will be the kingdom of the world, and our king is coming back to Jerusalem. At the final war in Ezekiel 38, 37, 38, 39, Gog and Magog will be in Jerusalem. And so that piece of real estate holds key in biblical prophecy. And since we are biblical Christians, it's important to us. And many people have been asking. I was in South Africa, people were asking. In the airport, people were asking. Everywhere I've gone, people are asking, is this the end? Is Jesus coming back? Similar questions were being asked in the scripture that we just read. There were two questions. Uh, first, the question was, tell us when will these things be? When will be the end of the age? And then they said, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Two questions we're asking Matthew 24, and we're asking the same things. When will these things be, and what will be the sign of these coming? And we recognize that what, it, what we're seeing now, and it's interesting because there was a time when people could write off the Bible and say, that's just some fairy tale stuff, that's just some whatever, that has nothing to do with us. But everything we see in the word of God is coming true right before our very eyes. And this thing is not recent. It has nothing to do with our current uh, politicians and people that are there. It goes back to history. To Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. And from those two sons were, prob sons were problems, and those problems exist even today. They're fighting for the affection and the love, of, and, and God chose one boy, he was a boy of the chosen, and, and you know, I don't want to talk about the mess of a side chick, but it's so messed up when you get your marriage all twisted and mixed up and do things your own way. Hagar wasn't supposed to have Abraham's baby, but Abraham was trying to help God. That's a whole nother message for another day. 
God promised this land to his people. He said, I'll make your people and I'll prosper them beyond. There will be, you have more children than the sand on the sea. Got to say this, you know, I'm not a good pastor. If I don't remind you, the true blessings of God are, rec- are, are clear in the Abrahamic covenant. The true blessings of God is not money, is not cars, is not houses. Those things are wonderful. True blessings are children and land. If you want the blessings of God as children, it's interesting. They want to give you a shot. They want to give you a shot to keep you from having babies and having a period for a year. That's not, that ain't even recommended. Most places around the world mess you up. And it's usually to women that look like my mama that they want to give it to. Population control because the devil want to control your blessings. Amen. That, that's what population control is, to shut you down. Control population but uh, control your power because your power is not the money you have because the Federal Reserve decides how good your money is. The power is when you have children and land. And he promised them children and land. That's why I'm so glad about you to having babies. God bless you. I ain't trying to have no more babies. I know I'm done. I'm a, I'm a squeeze orange. I'm done. But I tell you what, <laughs> I tell you what, I, 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 I love this role of granddad. Some, some of the deepest conversations I had this week, I've talked to some of you this week, deepest conversations I had this week is in our kindergarten class. Man, those children been talking to me and I've been talking to them. The, the deepest conversations I had this week has been with kindergartners. Kindergartners. They, deep, they think deeply. They don't mess it all. Y'all, they, they not, they're not tainted by all the stuff. You, y'all, y'all, they think deeply. So we see this land is contested for because ultimately throughout history, we see that Satan want to block uh, the, the prophecies of God. But don't you know that the devil can't stop what God says what God says is yes and amen and the enemy. I don't care how big and bad the devil want to be, you can't stop it. But we were seen with horrific sights this week, seeing war on both sides. What I last count I saw is over 3,000 people died since last week Saturday. Over 3,000 people have died since last week Saturday. Whether they're Palestinians, whether they're Israelis, 3,000 people, children, mothers, grandmothers, innocent people. And what disgusted me most is people who were cheering for destruction. You know, you can find out a lot about people today, people who are cheering for evil and destruction, people who are excited about death. The very same people who say they're against death. You know, very same people who say if one man is shot by the police, black lives matter, but I guess nobody else's lives matter because they celebrated Hamas flying on hand gliders, killing people, partying. Now, I wouldn't have been at the party for sure. I wouldn't have been there. And none of my family there, but I don't see how we can celebrate destruction. It has been horrific what we've seen, the videos we've seen. These are the people, some of the people from the party, their corpses laying there. While people celebrate around the world, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you know, it's a real problem when we superimpose our worldview upon the world. When I lived in Africa, y'all know I lived in Africa for 12 years. I'm born here. Uh, when I lived in Africa, just to make that clear because y'all get mixed up, African Americans get mixed up the most. When I lived in Africa, people would come visit us from here. And when they got there, they would always see things from their own lens of where they're from. And they would always miss it because they always, oh, look at this, they, look, that person disrespecting this person, da, 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 da. No, 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 you're seeing it wrong. No, no, no. Everybody wasn't in the transatlantic slave trade. Everybody in not America, just like you, don't have the same issues. And this, and, and this whole thing in Israel ain't about liberation of folks from colonialism. Uh, no, if it was about that, that would have been easy. People had land, had whatever else. These folks said that they're not going to be done until every Jew is dead. And every concession that they've ever had, and they've had many concessions, has never been enough. Until everybody's dead. And by the way, you say, oh, yeah, that's them over there. Uh, uh, They also said, Israel is little Satan. America is big Satan. And so you, with 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 your Cardi B's and Beyonce's, they see you as more evil than them. 
with your, with your black self, with your Cardi B and your Beyonce and your jay Z's. They believe you're more evil than the people they were killing. Because they say, look how wicked they are. They're butt naked on television. And they feel like they're the righteous people in the world. So while we're celebrating and congratulating them, as soon as they can get to you, you're next. Yeah, that's deep, isn't it? The very people that's at the university celebrate. Okay, I, I can stay there, but I just want to say that. And so we saw in the text two questions, but then there were three instructions to those questions. Two questions, three instructions. And I want to look at the, not, I want, don't want to focus on the questions of the disciples, which we have the exact same questions. I want to focus on the instructions that Jesus gave them. Don't be deceived. Don't be troubled. And finally, get ready for worse. Now, this ain't one of those messages that God will give you over your haters and, you know, we all going to have a wheelbarrow money and everything's going to be all right if you have faith. Mm -mm, that's not what Jesus preached. He said, don't be deceived. Don't be troubled. Get ready for worse. Get ready for worse. First, let's look at what he said here. Don't be deceived. When they asked him about the last days, the first thing he said is, don't be deceived deceived and 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 he was clear let me just let me just I want to do something here he was clear in the text in Matthew 24 he was clear that uh when he said don't be deceived Jesus said take heed don't deceive you because many will come in Jesus's name saying they're there to Christ and will deceive many there'll be people that say they come and doing God's work in the last day and deceive many. There are people who think that killing these people was God's work. We did God's work. We killed people. We're doing God's work. Don't be deceived. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12 gives us a clear view of deception in the last days. The coming of the lawless one, this was in our class this morning talking about demonic influence, talking about Satan. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Just because somebody does a miracle, just because somebody tells you a prophecy and it comes true, don't mean it's from God. Don't be deceived. That's why I'm sorry, y'all. You ask me, people ask me, have you heard this preacher? Have you heard this? I'm just not eating off everybody's plate. I just can't eat what everybody cooking. Some folks got roaches. Some folks nasty. Some folks scratching, itching, cooking. If they do that in the natural, how much more is what you taking in a spiritual realm killing you? Don't be deceived. There are many people doing lying wonders. The devil can speak in tongues. There's demonic tongues. Did y'all know that? Everybody speaking in tongues ain't from God. Who told you? Just because somebody told you your ID number, your, your social security number, and told you who your mama is, don't mean they ain't from God. It must be God. It came true. Oh, no. They love stupid Christians. People ain't been raised, ain't read your Bible, just going by how you feel, following your heart. Don't be deceived. Some things that feel good ain't good. Just because your gut says good, your gut ain't God. Lord have mercy. There are many power signs, lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, who are dying, because they did not receive the love of the truth. The only way you really can be deceived is when you don't love the truth. That's that old school stuff. I don't want to hear that. I don't need that. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that on YouTube. I didn't hear that on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear it on TikTok because it's in the Bible and they ain't preaching the Bible most of the time. You got to love the truth. Lord, speak your truth to me that they might be saved. And for this reason, watch this. God, not the devil, God will send them strong delusion. Now, this blows me away. God will send them strong delusion that they may believe the lie. 
since you're so smart, since you know so much, and you won't read your Bible, but you'll you stay on your timeline all day. You listen to folks, man, I can't preach only so long, but you will sit and listen to somebody talk, you listen to folks talk all day on YouTube. God going to give you up to a delusion. He's going to give you up to your own craftiness. Isn't it interesting you've been to college and, 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 and you, got a, you got a degree, good for you, but now you think you know everything? You did have a major, you know that. That means you just know a slice. You had a whole major. You just, know, you just know a slice of the world. But you got a degree now. Now you somebody. Now I ain't against degrees. I got plenty of them. I got plenty of them, but I recognize that they were trying to train me. Hallelujah. I'm the spook that sat by the door. Amen. <laughs> they trained me, but now I'm flipping it on them. Thank you. I love you. You come every Sunday. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. Now, they did not deceive the truth. God, God will send them a strong delusion that they will be, that they will be, that they should not believe the lie, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We're being controlled, being deceived. The enemy is deceiving us in many ways. Y'all may not like it, but he's deceiving us. He's playing you, programming our minds. We just do whatever everybody say do. We get, we get our, our oh, let, me, let me go to the next slide. I think I can get there. We get, oh yeah, hallelujah. There are many sources of de deception. Now, thank God we got great people who are, let me, let's start in the church. Do you see that shadow up there? I didn't want to put no real face there because you think I'm talking about your uncle. But uh, there's so many fake preachers. Just because he got a clergy collar and a long robe don't mean he's a real preacher. Just because reverend, elder, pastor, bishop, apostles in front of his name don't mean he's real. Only you will know him by his, oh, you will know him by his fruit. In the last days, there's a lot of lying preachers. All you got to do is get a building and, 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 oh, no, you don't even need a building. All you need is a good cell phone and a, and a ring light. And you will send them money every morning and call them your personal prophet. Just because he a preacher don't mean he right. There's some fake preachers out there in every denomination. I'm Church of God in Christ. There's some fake Church of God in Christ preachers. There's a fake bat. I started at home. There's some fake Kojic. Just because it say Kojic on the door don't mean the preacher inside is right. Fake Baptists, fake Methodists, fake Presbyterians, fake Nazarenes, fake Catholics, fake non-denominational. Oh, he non-denominational. He good. Who told you? He ain't even answering to nobody. <laughs> Who told you they was good? It's because their preacher don't make them right. He had to be right. Is he in the word? Is she in the word? The source of deception is the church who won't even touch. Do you know my greatest criticism, my greatest, most damning phone calls on this phone come from gospel, so-called gospel preachers who keep telling me to stop preaching what I'm preaching? I'm talking about high-ranking gospel preachers. You need to stop talking about that. They watching right now. They tell me what I'm saying on Sunday morning in my own church. I'm not exaggerating. You need to stop talking about it. Why? Because let's just get them excited. God going to bless you. Everything going to be all right. You coming out. He going to bless you. Money's coming. Your haters will fall. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Beware in the last days especially Some will say they work for God And others will call themselves gods What we see right now with Israel And Hamas and, and Hezbollah And all this that's going on Beware of the church The fake church Don't judge them by the sign Don't judge them by their look There's some good Black preachers, white, Latinos, Asians, natives, and there's some bad in every one of those races, too. Some of y'all think if the preacher white, he right. Yeah, you know, the white people, them white preachers be right. No! There's some wicked white preachers that wear khakis and a polo shirt. Still wicked. If he 
ain't black don't mean he right. He can hoop like, like an angel, but he ain't right. He got skill, he got talent, but he wicked. How can you be a preacher and not talk about the genocide that's happening in our community right now? They killing 3,000 babies a day. Not in Mississippi, thank you, thank you, legislation. They get 3,000 babies a day. And we silent or no, it'd be quite a woman's right to choose. You know, you know where I, what? Strange fruit. How can we be quiet? And they're cutting the testicles off of our children. And calling it gender affirming health care. What? You cutting a child's testicles off. You turning a man's penis. I'm glad the children here because they hear it in kindergarten anyway. Turn the man's penis inside out, making the vagina. And we ain't saying that's wrong. Just quiet. Well, people gonna do what they wanna do. We giving children medication. What do you call it? Puberty blocking medication that we believe now. There's studies that are showing it's jacking them up for life. For life, the enemy, how weak have we become where our fathers, our brothers, our mothers stand aside and just say, oh, well, I can't do nothing. We will fight to the death. You will not castrate a child in this church. I guarantee you. If, if the child thinks he wants to be castrated, I'm going to hold him till he's old enough. When you're 20, you do what you want to do. But you aren't castrating my 10-year-old. Hello, somebody. You're not cutting our daughter's mammary glands off and putting fake penises from the, from the, from the, from the muscle on their arm down on them. You are not doing that to our daughters. Devil is a lie. When I was young, I was stupid. I thought I was Superman, but at least nobody bought me a cape. <laughs> Told me to jump off the top of the building so that I could be happy. The news. Another source of deception. All the news. I ain't put one of them up there. All of them. CNN, Fox, Al Jazeera, you name it all. Uh, uh, it, just because they talk calm on, on, on uh, what's my, uh, Mississippi Public Radio. MPB. Hey, they talk so calm, they just be lying. Calm and lying. If you believe everything you heard on the news, you already took. Don't worry, I'm getting to Israel, I'm there. Thank you, I appreciate that. The school, this is why, who's the number one educator of our children? It's the parents. You as a parent should be the number one educator of our children, and we should dictate, we should be at school board meetings, we should be at the school, we should be everywhere else, and demand, I want to see the curriculum, this should not be taught. Amen, somebody. And if y'all don't change, I take them out. I find a place for them to be, if, if, even if I got to educate them myself, because it's my constitutional right. The judge right here. Take me to court. Hallelujah. <laughs> take me to court. We are deceived by our peer pressure. Can you see my peer pressure meter? Don't matter how old you are, peer pressure is real. I mean... I mean, you can't even have a hairstyle without three people coming to me. I don't like your hair. Like, who asked you if you like my hair? Obviously, I like it. So I'm not asking you if you like my hair. Why you got natural hair? Because I won't. Why you, why you perm your hair? Because I won't. Why you in between? Why you got so much new growth? You somewhere in between natural and perm. <laughs> My point is this, it's not about hair. Stay off of hair, because I know you wouldn't bother somebody to talk about hair. My point is, people will control you for the rest of your life if you let them. People will control you. They want to give you their opinion. They want to tell you what to do. They will tell you to leave your husband, because your husband, I, I, he just looked cockeyed. I would leave him. But they, you go ahead and leave your husband. They'd be the first one calling. I know I'm telling the truth. Brother, they tell you, you, you be a real man. You got to put that woman in place. You got to show you the man. Oh, okay. That ain't how Christ loved the church. 
stupid. Now you trying to beat me. I'm the man. I'm the man. If you got to say you the man, you ain't the man. When the man, the man don't have to walk around talking about I'm the man. When you the man, you ain't got to be talking about hey, 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 y'all ain't respecting me. You obviously been disrespected so much that you don't know. I walk in my house, I ain't got to say respect me. They going to respect me because I'm respectable. How you, how you, how you going to submit to something that ain't respectable? You, you submit, submit, submit. Give her something to submit to. Get that woman something to submit to. You still playing video games, brother? You got a call of duty in this house. <laughs> okay, 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 y'all. Let's move on. Fake preachers, fake news, the school, peer pressure, political parties. Now, let me tell you something. There's some good preachers. There's some good people real journalists. There's some good educators, many who are here. There's some good people that will give you good advice. All are not bad, but you got to beware of the systems that the enemy has infiltrated to use for demonic purposes. Do I look, I listen to the news, but then I got to have discernment to know that there's a system behind. Only about, there's only a few companies that own all the news companies. I mean, you, oh, that's the conservative news, that's the liberal news. No, 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 they all owned by the same folks. And it's controlled what comes out. But I got to be discerning. I got to be discerning a preacher. I got to be discerning of the school. That's why we need our, we're going to have our own school all the way up to grade 12. And one of these days, one of these days, I believe God. Can I throw this to y'all? Y'all ready for this? I believe God. We're going to have a certified university one of these days. I may be about to go. Have a whole college. It's going to be college to university. Uh, let's go. We have one as a denomination, but nobody valued it. We can have one as a church. Call me on that. Since y'all watching. <laughs> Since y'all watching. Call me on this phone. Don't call the church a line. Even political parties are really false differences. We got great politicians. I don't like politicians. I like public servants. McCray Jackson, public servant. She didn't, ask, she didn't come here and ask to speak. She came for church. I put her up. She almost said no when I asked her to speak. And her husband said, take the opportunity, baby. <laughs> that, that's, that's a real man who loves you. She didn't have to speak. She didn't come here and say, I need to get on. I need to get on. I need to get on. And then I got to go. I'm going to five more churches before, you know, before the day is over. Better watch. I'm scared. Of, I'm scared of Republicans. I'm scared of Democrats. I'm scared of Green Party. I, I'm scared of the, the, what's that? The whatever party. Third party, fourth party. You better watch that the enemy uses these false dividing lines. I know I'm telling the truth to get you all. And, and, and the brother came here and said, it's not the elephant, it's not the donkey, it's the lamb. The main thing is that once we have these allegiances to people who have no allegiance to God, we find ourselves in a bad place. We need to demand that righteousness rule in the land. Yeah. Amen to somebody. He says, don't be deceived. What I'm trying to say to you is don't be tricked by the enemy in this time. We are in the end time. Now, is this the end of the end, what we see right now? I don't know. I know that United States hand is in this. United States hand is in it. We send money there, and then they pay for weapons here. Da, 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 da. We see the world realigning. We see China aligned with Russia. And acting like that's new. Since 2006, for sure, the BRICS coalition has been there. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, been there. Uh, that ain't new. And we send somebody over there to try to get them right. They've already covered China China owns us <sighs> we see Iran North Korea aligning with Russia and China 
and other smaller ones. We see India changing their name, being oppressive to anybody who's not Hindu. They're killing Muslims and Christians in India. We see the lines being drawn clearly. We see America seeking. See, we see that people think that we're weak, but then we're still making alliances also. Meanwhile, we just happy for the thong song. You know, just give me the thong song. Let me just hang out and it's all good. Meanwhile, the world is shifting. We see that a lot of other things, the, uh, well, let me go to the advice that Jesus gave. Don't be troubled. Don't be deceived. Don't be troubled. This is what he told us. And many of us may be troubled. But I'm saying to you, don't be troubled. I'm getting ahead of myself. Matthew 24, 6b to 7, and says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. Let me tell you something. This is not time to be losing our minds. This is not our time to be depressed and, 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 and overwhelmed with anxiety. I get anxiety every day. You know, I get anxious. It's time to get up. That's anxiety, but I, ain't gonna, I don't need a pill for it. Yeah. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. The end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. The globe is going to change. You can plant all the trees you want, drive electric cars every day. The globe is changing. And the Bible promised us that the globe is going to change. And you got people now trying to give, uh, what is it called, Uh, uh, citizenship, not citizenship, Um, what do you call it, uh, personhood, that's the term I was looking for, personhood to the ocean, so the ocean will have rights above your rights, that's, that's like, that's a big deal right now floating around the UN, give the ocean personhood so that humans who are messing up the whole thing, we will be able to lock y'all down. Don't you fish, don't you boat, don't you swim up in here. This ocean is a person. They already been praying the trees. You, You can celebrate Earth Day in school, but you can't celebrate a Christian holiday. And Earth Day is a straight up wicked holiday. When you, when you pray to Mother Earth, and you was like, happy Earth Day. You know what? You know how? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I ain't sorry. Thank you. All right. I love you, man. You know how jacked up we are? We're doing, I'm going back to deceive just for a minute. They can tell you in the morning that today is celebrate your second sibling's day. And we'll start saying, posting pictures. You have no evidence. That is celebrate your second sibling day. I refuse to participate. I refuse to participate. Today is celebrate your Sunday. Today is celebrate your day. The day is you got a crooked big toe day. Hey, I got a crooked big toe. We are that brainwash that we will celebrate holidays that don't even exist. Because somebody said it and it went viral. Uh Uh-oh, and then some of us, we didn't get the memo in the morning, so it's like 7 o'clock in the evening, and we take a selfie. Uh, Today is celebrate your second sibling day. I don't want to get left out. This is my second sibling. Look up Earth Day. That's that's straight up demonic. They've been, this whole climate change talk, the climate is changing, but it has shifted to something else. It is really worshiping other gods to control humans <laughs> to no end. And you said, climate change, climate change, we need to go recycle. First of all, I pay more for that blue garbage can than I do for my black one. I'm like, no, give me two black ones. And y'all figure out what y'all want to do with it. <laughs> and you see, notice, notice how some of y'all looking at me and you leave Earth Day alone. We got to take care of the Earth. God tells us to be good stewards. We're supposed to take care. We, we, are, we, are, uh, we are stewards of creation. God gave us this creation. We should take care of our animals. But we shouldn't be kissing, hugging, loving animals and calling animals our babies and, and leaving babies in foster care. All these babies in foster care and you adopting a dog and giving it insurance? 
The dog got life insurance, health insurance, special food, and a will, and a burial plan. And your cousin in trouble, you won't even take care of your cousin because you don't like them because they ratchet, they ghetto. But you like a dog. Do you know that dog? You put perfume on that dog. You put a bow on their head, let them out. They're going to go sniff behind another dog and do what dogs do. You're going to stick his nose right up somebody, just let him out. And you're going to come home with some dog and you're going to have some mutt. <laughs> Okay, don't be troubled. There will be famines, pestilences. This war last week that began and is intensifying and it's bad and it's ugly. But it's one of 114 conflicts happening in the world right now. Most of them you don't even know about. Some of them are non-international acts of aggression. They're terrorists or clashes within countries, but there's 114 at the best count that I can find of wars. In the Middle East, there are 45 armed conflicts going on right now. Cyprus, Egypt, Iraq, Israel, of course, Libya, Morocco, yeah, Morocco, Palestine, Syria, Turkey, Yemen, Western Sahara. Oh, there's some kind of conflict happening right now. In Africa, there's more than 35 armed conflicts. You saw what's happening in Burkina Faso, of course you do. You know what's happening in Cameroon, right? Who said amen? God bless you. Central African Republic, D D DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia. The war in Ethiopia been going on for how long? Nobody says nothing about it. All we say is Ukraine, 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 because we're so mind controlled that we just say what the news says. We don't think for ourselves. Ethiopia, Mali, Mozambique, Nigeria, Senegal, Somalia, South Sudan, and Sudan. There are conflicts. In Asia, 21 armed conflicts in two, four, five countries. Afghanistan, where we left all them weapons, some of them showed up in, 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 in Palestine. We left the weapons, said they ain't gonna do, they don't know what to do. We trained them how to use them. We even left the owner's manual. India, India. India intensifying itself. And while India was doing atrocities, their prime minister was here with our president shaking hands while the woman, the two women were raped online. Remember the two women who were raped because they were Christians, beaten in the seat. And I, we didn't say nothing, so we just shook their hand happy so we could maybe send some plastic bowls over there and sell for trade. And the Christians, quiet. Christians being killed. And Christians don't say nothing about it. We quiet. We're we even got magazines out in, the, out in the lobby. That's the best thing to set out there. Don't nobody touch them. But you read Essence on how to get the best turn on. Y'all with me. <laughs> Europe. Seven armed conflicts. Russia was in Crimea. I was in Ukraine when the war was going on with Russia and Ukraine. I was in Ukraine when this was happening. This ain't new. Ooh, they, they bombing Ukraine. They were bombing the Ukraine then. People are hiding Bibles now. Zelensky is shutting down churches right now. And we say he a hero. Deceived. Moldova. Georgia. Armenia, Armenia and Azerbaijan squeezing in, being squeezed, Azerbaijan and Turkey squeezing our Armenia, the only Christian nation right up there, and they're squeezing them even right now. Hallelujah. Latin America, six armed conflicts between Mexico and Colombia. They're not international, but they're happening within there between cartels and whatever else that's happening in Mexico and Colombia. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6 through 9. You can lose your mind when you see what's happening. When you see the atrocities about to happen, 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 through 9, I'm almost done. Give me as long as God tell me. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. I got a lot to say there, but I'm not. But let us 
who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you are doing. Listen, whether you post-trip, mid-trip, pre-trip, it don't matter. It's going to get worse before you get up out of here. You know, we can argue, and I told you what I believe, and I showed you the Bible. It's not my time to share with you now what I believe, when the rapture is going to come, when we're going to go. But it doesn't matter where it comes. Things are getting worse, but we should not be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, John 14. You believe in God, believe also in me, that in my Father's house there are many mansions. God has us. uh, uh, This is not time for us to be losing sleep. This is time for us to be at war. War time ain't no time to be asleep. We should be praying fast and no time to let down. We're getting no lounging clothes and relaxing. This time for war clothes. This war time. If even if nothing was happening in Israel, it's war time here. And God says, oh God, he blesses those who bless Israel. He says, I'll bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. You better watch what you repeat and what you're saying about Israel. Now, we don't obsequiously, docilely just think everything Israel does is right. No, we're not naive. They sponsored us. They sponsored Ahab and Jezebel. There's some bad Israeli folks and some good Israeli folks. But we know they do have a right to exist. We know they shouldn't just be annihilated. Hello? How can people who have experienced genocide support genocide? We know what it means to be targeted. Well, actually, we know historically. Because right now, we target our own selves. Because there ain't no white people coming to my neighborhood to get me. It's your cousin that I'm worried about. I'm just saying. Y'all talking about KKK. I'm worried about the Crips and the Bloods more than KKK. And whoever, that that ain't the current gangs. Yeah, those two. God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That don't mean he's going to take us up out of here, but he has, he has designed us to walk victorious no matter what we face. I'm not going to lock myself in the door. I'm not going to lock up and just hide and, and can't nobody keep me safe but God. Hallelujah, somebody. My curse is the man whose trust is in man, but bless, Jeremiah 17, 5, but bless is the man whose trust is in the Lord. My final point, Jesus' final point, things are going to get worse. Get ready for worse. I wish I could tell you things were going to get better. They're not. They're getting worse. They're going to get worse. It's going to get more more worse. Man, all the teachers that had me out of here. I'm going to say more worse. (laughs) It's going to get worse. Get ready. It's not going to get better. Tomorrow's not going to be okay, per se. It's going to get more and more difficult. Because everything the Bible has predicted up to this point, we see it, and we need to know it's going to get even more difficult. Now, in case I confused y'all, I was in the Army. I'm not telling y'all kids to go to the military. I'm telling y'all, stay in my Army. You ain't ain't rushing that. Your first career option. I just want to be clear on that. I think, you know, I know we got a Navy SEAL in here. Where you at, Navy SEAL? Only Navy man. Oh, well. Where'd he go? There he go. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. The money is going to get worse. The economy is not getting much better. It's going to get worse. Why is it going to get worse? The Bible tells me it's going to get worse because ultimately this cash is going to be gone. And we're going to central bank digital currencies. And once we go to this digital currency, then they can control, because in the name of climate change, in the name of your S, S, social governance, S, what is that? SG, yeah, SG score. If they say you, you driving too much, you driving too much. So then your car won't allow you to buy gas because you drove too much. Or to protect your health, you bought too many hamburgers. You've reached your quota for this month. So we ain't going to let you buy no more hamburgers. 
because we need to keep you healthy. Now, that might be true, but I don't need nobody to control me from it. Or you're a terrorist because you believe in the Bible. And you need to be canceled. Now we got to do it, flick a switch. So money, the currency, the Bible tells us it's going to be one world currency at some point. And governments now are talking, we need to make it digital. It would be so much better. It will save you. Already you can scan at Whole Foods with your hand and buy stuff. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. My brothers and sisters, if, your, if, your, if all of your self-image and self-esteem is in how much money you make, soon you're going to have to bow down and agree with some things. You're going to agree that, you're going to have to agree with somebody that a woman, uh, that a man can have a baby. Because otherwise you're hateful. Now, I hope y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you. It's already here. That's why these people are scared. To even say, what is a woman? You, to ask somebody, what is a woman? I'm asking my doctor now, before I go to the doctor, ma'am, sir, what am I? Am I a male or female? Do you know what I am? Because if you don't know what I am, I don't want you to see me. Because if you don't know I'm a man, then why would I come to you as a doctor? You got folks graduate from medical school now that don't know what a woman or a man is or won't admit it. And the funny thing is women ain't saying nothing. Y'all should be mad. A man, six foot one like me, 220 pounds, high heels on, acting like a hey. that They used to call that blackface. They used to call that blackface when other folks tried to act like us. Y'all ain't mad that a man trying to act like you? Now that's just cute. We diversity. It's just diversity. Diversity, a big old man with a male print on his skirt. And you want to call him her because it's about the pronouns. Devil is a lie. What do I look like? A man with lipstick on? That's what you look like. A big old grown man with a, with a five o'clock shadow. And now you got men who teach women how to be more sexy as women. What in the world? They teaching y'all, y'all teaching y'all how to put on makeup. And no, here's the problem, y'all going to them. How should I be cute? How should I, girl, let me show you. What? What kind of woman? He's advising you. Let me tell you something. Somebody asked me my pronouns, I'm going to ask them what I look like. You got one time. To figure out what my pronouns are. You got one time. Because if you're wrong, I might have to. What's your problem? What you asking me for? What I look like? <laughs> Ask me no pronouns. Um, praise the Lord. You better watch this on YouTube before they come. The money. I was on the money. The money is being devalued all around the world. They're trying to crash the dollar. They've got new currency that's backed in gold. They already said that they're not using our money as a currency. Even Saudi Arabia, who's our friends, is not using that currency. They need the dollar to crash because America is the last country, last big country in the world where you can be free. So it's the last place that I can preach like this. Otherwise, if I was somewhere else, I'd been dead. Last week. But I live in America. But not, most of us are already afraid. But then there's a few. We can still be bold and free. Even with, even with our top, even with the top elected officials in the room, I can still preach. And they, you know, get what I'm saying? You ain't live nowhere. You're talking about, you don't know, nobody know oppression if you ain't been in America. You ain't been nowhere. <laughs> I was, I got to tell you this and I'm done. I was, in, when I was living in South Africa, there was a comedian, I don't even know the guy's name, was on radio in South Africa, telling jokes about the president in America. And a radio interview was just chatting him on. He was talking jokes on a, in another country, bad about them. I don't even remember who the president was. And he was dogging, da 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 da, da black guy. Ha. And then, while he was telling his jokes, he switched to their president. He said, yeah, your president said, she said, shut up. She told him, shut up. We respect our officials here. And we don't say anything about our officials here. Keep talking about your officials. 
but you don't do that here about ours. When I was in Thailand, they told me, if you just write on their money, if you, if you just mark the king on their money, you go to jail. You deface their money, you go to jail for just defacing the money. If you can't make it in America, you can't make it nowhere. If you're failing in America, you will fail everywhere. <laughs> it's because I'm black. No. Black folks come all the way from Caribbean and from other places. They make it. It's because you ratchet. <laughs> Violence is increasing in our streets. Because the enemy, it was said in class today, the enemy knows that out of chaos, they can bring control. This is why you see, this is why we need proper judges, because these folks who can just go to the stores and rob and do whatever else, and they let out the next day, no bail, no nothing, no consequences. We're teaching them that this is good. They go in 20s, 30s, 50s, 100s on camera, carrying a hand, arm full of whatever. Do you think that's by accident? That's being done with a purpose. Dysfunction in our families. Let me tell you something. You don't want to be married, then don't get married. But if you don't want to be married, don't date. You're jacking up the pool. Get off Tinder and all this other stuff. If you don't want to be married, why are you dating? And if you're dating, why don't you get married? Hello, somebody. Ain't nothing wrong with not getting married, but if you don't want to get married, don't get married. But it's dysfunctional for you to be out here just sleeping around like an animal. Chasing the next good feeling. That's dysfunctional. Y'all, I'm mad at everybody and I'm done. I'm mad at this church. I said something I didn't know what I was talking about. I said, I'm not going to the Delta Fair. I'm going to the real estate fair. I'm going to Jackson. It's called the state fair. It was the same fair that's down here. I was going to see the biggest pumpkin in the state and the biggest zucchini squash. I wanted to see the biggest cow war. I drove all the way up to Jackson yesterday. We pulled up, Gershom said, I'm the same rise I saw in South Haven, Dad. I said, hold up, hold up boy, you don't know what you're looking at. We're going to go on the other side. So I went walking around, and I'm asking everybody who look like they somebody, where's the agriculture? Where's, I want to see the big, you know, the big pump. They used to have that stuff. Lady told me, she said, and it blew me away. My children heard them. That's a lost art. Nobody does that anymore. We used to have that stuff. We don't have it no more. It was about 10 cows, 14 chickens, some rabbits, and that was it. And one of the cows I saw his ribs. I was like, Lord, what's going on? I'm saying this for a reason. Now, we made a day out of it. We did all right. We drove longer than we intended to fare. Because they already rode the rides. That wasn't paying again. <laughs> What it really tells me, I'm hearing what that man just said over there. I'm trying to ignore him. What it's really telling me is that there are less and less farmers growing food. They're getting paid not to grow. They're pushing farmers out of business. Let me tell you why. If you control the food, you control the people. There are people in this church, we have dinners, and I've had people a little bit younger than me that never seen real food. What is that? I, what do you mean, what's what? That. That's meat in gravy. I ain't never seen that. They don't sell it at Zaxby's. It's not at Bojangles. It's going to get worse. This is why we grow some of our own vegetables. This is why we must have an agricultural ministry where we have whole food. Because it's going to get worse. 
I was at Sam's the day before I went to the state fair. <laughs> all I wanted was what I wanted. That's all I'm going to say on that. I got there early, Friday. They didn't have it, but the man assured me the meat truck was being offloaded. Come back later. I came back seven hours later. The shelves in the meat section at Sam's right here was almost empty. They had a lot of chicken. Man, no beef. Why am I telling you this? Because the enemy knows wrong food. The devil is busy, y'all. It's going to get worse in these last days. And if all we eat, and they just had a study, there are, what you call it, contraceptive, animal contraceptive, traces of animal contraceptives in fast food. I hope y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you. There's traces of birth control pills in the food at the, at the top fast food restaurants, including the best ones. I'll go down the list. McDonald's, Burger King, Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's, go down the line. All of them. To control. This is last day spirit of pharmacia. That the enemy wants you. That's what, look, 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 look. We cook your, I don't cook. That's stupid. What do you mean you don't cook? You go, you go out every day and trust a 17-year-old. Making your food. Every day? I ain't saying don't ever go out. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, I won't be. I ain't sorry. I ain't sorry. I ain't sorry. <laughs> and finally, I went around and clockwise. The fear that enemy is trying to bring upon us. Now is not a time to be afraid. Now is not a time to feel like I can't make it. I can't have babies. This world is too bad. If God give you a baby, he got a purpose for that baby. I can't make it, it's too bad. You can make it. Losing your mind, don't be losing your mind. God is still in control. He's still God. It's going to get worse. But let me tell you, even as it get worse, let me show you something and I'm done. I'm done. 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Don't cooperate with the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sugar will not be my testimony. High blood pressure will not be my testimony. Y'all say I'm borderline, I'm going to drink. I'm, leave them sodas alone. Leave all that foolishness alone. Drink some water. Eat some vegetables. Walk some. Exercise. Get your body. If you can't walk from the back of the parking lot, what you going to do when, the, when things get really tough? There's a brother here. We fight him. He walked to church for an hour. But really what he's saying is I'm staying fit. We said, man, you ain't got to walk. We'll drive you. Can you walk an hour? You may have to one day. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Gas prices went up the other day. It's a little bit over $3 a gallon. But last week I was in South Africa. Gas, U.S., is $9 a gallon. I came here and thank God for the cheap gas. And you make 10 times what they make. Gas, U.S., $9 a gallon. And so in the morning, my brother came with me, brother from Georgia, said, why are everybody walking? Why are so many people walking? Look at the gas price, bro. That's why so many people walking. First John 5, 4 to 5, it's going to get worse. But for whatever is born of God, whoever is born of God overcomes the world, no matter how bad it gets. And this is the victory that has overcome the world and our faith. What's our faith? Not in the things we have. Our faith is in the God that we serve. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 to 58. But thanks be to who gives us the 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. No matter how hard it gets, and it's going to get harder, I have the victory in God. Hallelujah. I can't do it, but God can. My, one of my favorite scriptures, I think it is the favorite scripture, Romans 8, verse 31. We're going to read down to verse 35. What shall we then say? If God be, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Won't be no food on the shelves, but God will provide for us. Hello, somebody. While you can, you should be storing up your pantry. If I'm wrong, all you do is got extra food in your house. Then you eat it. But I got some cans that my kids, they don't eat it now, but one day they may have to eat it. And I don't like that. Well, then don't eat. <laughs> Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Verse 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who's God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It didn't tell you you wouldn't have problems. It said, but shall tribulation, shall distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. All of that is coming, but it shall not separate us from the love of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Stand with me. I want to pray with you even right now. What happens in Israel... God only knows what's happening right now. One thing we know, Jesus is coming back. But I don't want to be that alarmist and say, this is it, this is it, this is it. Nobody knows the time. He just said there'll be wars and rumors of wars, but that won't be it. More is coming. China and Taiwan, North Korea, South Korea, Iran, Saudi Arabia, you notice this hit to Israel was just when they were about to sign a peace accord with Saudi Arabia. Enemy don't want peace. These people say they want peace. They don't want peace. A democratically elected government don't want peace from another. They had the Abraham Accords before. They were moving forward with certain things. And the enemy said, I need chaos. But I'm here to tell you that God is still in control. Do not be deceived. Do not be troubled and prepare for worse. It's going to be worse. But in the middle of it, don't, don't you know <sighs> that God will be God in the middle of the storm. And he will protect his people in the middle of the storm. See, the Bible ain't about God making sure you have no problems. God let me down. He let me have problems. He said, behold, I'm with you always. What's next? What's next is that the people of God must rise and stand as people of God. Fight where you are. Fight where God leads you. Stand where you are and know that he's in control. God bless each of you. I am so excited to talk about Drive to Prayer. The Lord gave the vision to this ministry, I guess probably last summer, where we come out and we set up a tent and persons are driving on 51 Highway can pull in and we'll pray. We ask them, what is it that you need? And we pray for them and we trust God and touch and agree, pass them out of track and they're going about their business. The purpose of it is because we have to go into the highways and hedges. We've got to come outside of the walls of the church in order to touch those persons who may never come to church. We've had testimonies. We've had people to join the church who've come through Drive Through Prayer. We've had testimonies of healing and deliverance. So we're believing God for great and mighty things as we continue to do this outreach ministry. This is our list today. We take the names down and we put the names on our prayer call and we call the names out to God, trusting God for complete deliverance. And as you can see, 
We had quite a few people come through, at least 45 or 50 people come through today asking for prayer. So let's go into all the world and let's preach the gospel and let's do like Jesus said and make disciples of all men. God bless you. Every year we see a rise in anxiety, mental illness, addictions, violence, abuse, suicide, and all kinds of hopeless diseases. It is imperative as a church to be militant and advance the kingdom of God. Hence the drive through prayer. We don't wait on people to come to us. Desperate people are running to desperate places, many of the wrong places. We go to them and let them know that God is a deliverer, God is a healer, and that God brings freedom. Standing on the road, calling people to prayer, cars come in droves and we're able to lead them to the throne of grace, lead them to our king and realize that there are true solutions to the world's problems. Praying for people, leading people to God, reminding them that they are loved. We are a verbal sign that God is real. That's right. Many people are asking for a sign. We literally bring a sign to them and stand for God.